They say that I'm a bad man. I'm not a bad man. I've just made mistakes that are bad. My friend, my friend on the other hand, he is very bad. I am Ronald Kellings, and this is how I became the most maniacal creature known to the human race. A creature that is no longer part of that race. I was in a mental hospital. I don't know why I was in there. All I knew was that I took a nap and I woke up in a room, no windows, and a door that was locked from the other side. I didn't even do anything. Why am I in here? They said they can help me. They said they can turn what would be a lifetime in this this prison into into only a few weeks if I decided to go along with their formula to help them with their formula. Of course, I knew I didn't do anything wrong, but I knew I didn't have a choice. I accepted. But from then I didn't know what I was getting myself into. They took me to another room. A room that was like none that I have ever seen before. There were a group of scientists there. All of them of which looked at me with pure disgust and fear. Why are they looking at me like that? I should be the one that should be disgusted and feared for what they were about to do to me. They said that they found a, a formula, a serum that could help millions of people with conditions like mine. What condition? I don't have any. I'm not even sure. They never even explained what I am doing here. They took me, they took me to this chair and they put some band of some kind connected to a wire which was connected to a machine. I, I didn't think anything of it. I knew it was just a matter of time. I knew it was a waste of time for me to do this, but like I said, what choice do I have? Then, a sharp pain started going in my arm. I don't know what it was. It was like a million wasps were stinging me at the same time. And when I looked... At my arm, something was bulging. Something was trying to escape. I knew that was impossible. The only, the only living being that's using my arm is me. But then, as soon as it began, it was all over. They removed the, bra the brace from my arm. They said I have to go back in my room and after a few weeks, I should be cured, whatever that meant. And at first it was just slow, a slow, dull, one slow, dull day at a time. But I felt like I was finally gonna get out of here. But then a week in, I was gonna get out next week. But a weekend, I started feeling weird. I felt like my being wasn't mine anymore. I felt like my soul was starting to be taken control of. My mind wasn't being my own. I started hearing voices. Voices telling me to escape. Voices that wanted me to go for blood. <laughs> but I knew that was impossible, wasn't it? I'm the only one using my brain. No one else. Just me. But then, <laughs> I started feeling more and more out of control. I started ripping my hair out strand by strand. <laughs> I started scratching my head until blood started pouring out. I didn't know what was going on. And for some reason, my teeth were starting to hurt like crazy. I, I looked in a mirror 
start, not a mirror, more of a reflective surface that was in the wall. I opened my mouth and I didn't have teeth anymore. They were more like razors. They were more like sharp knives wanting to, to cut anything it makes contact with. <laughs> but for some reason, I wasn't afraid. In fact, I was darn right happy about it. I knew, but then my nails started becoming claws. Claws that can cut through solid steel, I suspect. Claws that can get me out of this prison. Get my revenge. So I did it. As simple as that. I did it. I cut out. And I started killing anyone that tried getting in my way. And I escaped. <laughs> I finally escaped, but something was missing, something that I couldn't explain. I felt hungry. I felt like I haven't eaten in days, which I have, but still, this hunger I've never felt before, it was like I could slaughter anything in my path just to get a quick snack. <laughs> and then I looked out of curiosity I found out that the medical hospital I was in was a lab a lab that used me as a guinea pig which made me even more happy that I slaughtered a lot of them but I still felt hungry not for blood but for something a little more a little more, well, I can't explain it. But then I saw a passerby coming, passing by, of course. For some reason, a voice was talking in my head. Ronnie! Who is saying that? Ronnie! Then I found something out. It wasn't a passerby. It was me. But it wasn't. He said, If you're hungry, then do what your new self is. Do what your new self does. You're an animal. And you know what animals like you and other predators do. And I knew what he was talking about. I knew it was time to hunt, but not for anything like a bird or a pig. Although, the way I've been treated, they might as well have been. I saw a, a group of people who were walking in the woods, having their own fun, possibly teenagers by the look of it. And then, <laughs> I started bringing out this maniacal laughter. <laughs> I started ripping them apart. I started ripping out their hearts. And I started feasting on them. I was finally... I finally was able to fill myself up. But... But something else made me feel joy. The thought of getting revenge on the same race I used to be a part of. The race that treated me like dirt. Everyone just called me a freak. They called me... They called me an anti-human. <laughs> that doesn't give a good ring to it, now does it? I'm thinking of a little more... Something a little more subtle. Something that tells them exactly who I am. I am the Venge Seeker. <laughs> and I will get my vengeance on every last one of these puny humans. They will soon find out how I felt when I did nothing wrong. 
and I was treated like nothing more than a common crook. But I might as well thank them as well. Without them, I wouldn't have had the ability to kill and get my revenge. <laughs> Ha 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 